Hey everybody, today we're going to be cracking open the history of Titanfall 2. Buckle up crackheads and crackers because I fucking love this game and I just need to get that off my chest right now. Developed by Respawn Entertainment and released to console on October 28th, 2016 with a campaign, multiplayer, and even co-op PvE mode. The game's story is exquisite. The only way I would change it is by making it longer because it's such an amazing game. First, we need to talk about the movement. Movement is such an integral part of this game. Wall running, double jump, sliding, grapple hook, speed boost. Everything in this game is meant for speed. After your training gets interrupted by invading IMC forces, you get dropped, literally and figuratively, straight into battle. From here, you have no HUD elements and you have to rely on your gun ammo counter for how many bullets you have left. Truly feeling helpless and just like any other grunt on the ground. After shooting through the IMC forces, you made up with Captain Lastimosa and his Titan BT7274. Fucking love BT, man. By the end of this game, every single one of you will love him too. I can assure it. Lastimosa and Jack get ambushed by the Apex Predators. Yes, the same ones that are in Apex Legends. And Lastimosa gets killed. This results with you using Lastimosa's pilot gear and scavenging for batteries to bring BT back online. Once linked with BT, you fight against incoming IMC drones and grunts. Eventually, you learn how to pilot your new Titan and end up taking down another titan sent to kill you. You then end up in a water reclamation facility, fighting your way to find Major Anderson, the mission that Lastimosa was on before he was KIA'd. Splitting off from BT, you open up a floodgate to let him pass, but it locks you from getting back to him so you find another way. After walking for a while, Jack gets ambushed, and if you aren't playing on the hardest difficulty like me, you hopefully won't die over 50 something times to the fucking ticks. I hate these motherfuckers. Eventually you'll find Kane, one of the Apex Predator commanders. Kane is nuts and not the good kind like me, so you have to kill him. Then BT says, hey I know a short cut, and if you've seen any movie ever, then you know it was only adding time to finding Major Anderson. BT gets caught, and Jack has to find his way through the labyrinth that is Ash's manufacturing plant. Yes, it's the same Ash that's in Apex Legends. God, I fucking hate how much they stole and butchered this beautiful game. Ash is a simulacrum. That's a big person smart word for they put the brain into Robo, which explains why she's the primary liaison for mercenary pilots in the multiplayer even after this. After leaving the underground kill center, you find your way to the last position of Major Anderson. But, uh... Yeah, I don't think that can get buffed out, sorry bud. While making your way through the facility, strange things start to unfold. You start skipping back and forth between time. Also a neat little thing, if you kill someone in the past, then hop to the future, it'll have the decomposing body in the same position, and it's so cool. I wish other games did stuff like this, cause it's so neat! Making your way to the top half of Anderson's body, you grab his hand gauntlet that allows you to control when you face back and forth between time. This level is just so much fun, and hopping between time in the facility is so amazing. I wish they did more, I wish they had a whole game like this, cause it's just so fun! Eventually the mission ends where you find the fold weapon. The fold weapon is the IMC equivalent of the Death Star, and they're gonna use it to glass the planet Harmony, which is where the Rebel forces are situated at. Once you get the fold weapon, you go to the beacon to contact the rest of the militia, but whoop de fucking do the beacon used to contact them is down. Now you have to go to the depths of hell again to get the arc tool from this Marvin bot. By the way, you can kill the bot for the tool, or you can take it from him and his screen turns sad. I chose to kill him so I wouldn't feel bad. After turning on the overheating reactor that won't kill you no matter how long you stay inside, the beacon is finally worked. Son of a bitch! Okay, now you have to jump, slide, wall run through the cranes to the beacon to get the doohickey and put in the thingamabob on the broken satellite dish. Making your way back down, you get ambushed by Richter. Once you kill the crazy German man and link up with Commander Sarah Briggs, BT puts in a good word for you so you won't get transferred to another Titan. After contacting Sarah, the rest of the militia all gather to assault the hangar bay where the fold weapon is being transferred. This level is an all out Titan fight! I'm talking Scorch Titans, IMC Reapers, IMC Grunts, the whole shebang. We got whatever the fuck those giant stocky titans are to flying titans to whatever the fuck those titans are. The whole level can be played without leaving your titan once, which is a nice change of pace from earlier levels. Alas, we're too late and we watch the IMC leave with the fold weapon at the very last second. Second to last mission, stay with me here. Now we fight in the air. Jack and crew have to air pirate their way to the cockpit and land the Malta. One problem. This motherfucker right here. For some godforsaken reason, they decided to make Viper one of, if not the hardest fight in the game. I know damn well everyone that's played this game teabagged the fuck out of him when you eventually killed him, because goddamn he's so annoying. Oh, he also destroys part of the ship, causing it to go down and start to crash. Finding your way to the Ark, BT encases inside of himself and then shields you from the blast where you're eventually found by Blisk. Final mission, baby, and it's the best one yet. Once Blisk is done interrogating you, he rips the Ark from BT and leaves you to die in the fire. Yet mama didn't raise no bitch, so you get back up and unlock the best weapon 
weapon in the game, the smart pistol. Automatic aiming so you can just feel like a total badass popping heads left and right. The final section is made for you to fuck shit up and by god are you gonna do just that. Along with the smart pistol you grab a data knife and BT's data core which is basically spraying. Once you make it to a clearing you call in your first titan which is beautiful. Watching this hunk of metal fall from the heavens when you got interrupted the first time is such an amazing feeling matched by nothing else. Slapping in that data core BT is back and you make your way to Sloan and Brisk Ice T while committing only a few war crimes along the way. After eventually killing Sloan, Brisk congratulates you for coming this far and invites you to the Apex Predators. Then you have to save the world. Realizing you can't stop the weapon, BT throws you one last time and sacrifices himself to protect the pilot. A truly heart-wrenching moment that brought me to tears when I first played. And that's the campaign. Can you tell how much I love this game? You know, multiplayer is a whole different breed. You're basically a grunt for half the game against the 2000 hour Ronin mains. You get your two weapons that you customize before the game, and you can even pick what abilities and Titan you want to play with. Want to be the Titan killer? Go right ahead. Spider-Man? Sure, grab the grapple hook. Super speedy man that can't stop, won't stop? We encourage it. You can play how you want to play, but at the end of the day, we're all going to get killed in one shot from the dude with the Kraber. Multiplayer is a lot of fun, but there is a very high skill ceiling, especially because some of these guys have been playing since like 2018 when the game still came out. If you can get past that that first learning curve though it is wild and wild of fun finally we have the co-op pve mode in this it's you and three other people fighting against swarms and swarms of titans coming around not too much to say here i mean it's a pretty basic pve but it still adds a little bit of flavor if you ever get sick of the multiplayer i'm so happy i bought this game even though it's been forgotten by its devs it'll never be forgotten by the countless fans who put millions of hours into the game the absolute masterpiece that respawn entertainment was able to create paved the way for movement shooters in the next decade to be based off titanfall 2 is truly a timeless game and it's going to be a sad day when the servers get taken offline and we can't zip line around with our favorite titans anymore.